2 MoTeC install on my twin charge build. I got my favorite shirt, I got my TY4 stroke hat, I'm ready to rock. Just a friendly reminder, this is meant to be interactive. This is not an instructional video. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to use good common sense. I've got my good uh, printouts from MoTeC and some pinouts from Yamaha and just trying to go through things. So if you see anything that's going on that could help uh, or that you think it could be improved, if you could let me know, that'd be awesome. All right, let's get to work. Hard to see here, but we're trying to get the ECU out through this little hole here, and there's just not enough room. I'm running into the sensor. This one, not sure what it is. I'll have to do some research on that. But I'm going to take this bracket out, which is this screw, and then another one, which is buried it's in here. There it is. You can kind of see it. So fun stuff. stock ECU. Now let's get the MoTeC plugged in. Look at that size difference. We're going to try to fit that MoTeC in there in a cramped engine bay already with the supercharger. Go twin charge they said. It'll be fun they said. All right. So I'm trying to decipher, sorry, I'm trying to decipher what the previous owner did. I believe he pulled this is a plug and play harness for Yamaha Apex, but I believe that there were some issues making sure that the system had enough voltage. Um, stock, they can vary quite a bit compared to what the MoTeC wanted. So this is going, I think, to a dedicated power source system, a 20 amp fuse. I've got two black wires coming out of here that I don't know what they're for. One goes to ground, so that makes sense. Another one goes to some sort of trigger, not sure what. Um, and then I've also got another power here for it looks like my boost control solenoid must have its own power. Uh, so I think, and then I've got this white wire. Anybody has any idea what this white wire is? This would be great. I'm not sure if this is my CAN bus tap or something else. Um, it was obviously installed and cut and no idea what it is. I'm going to trace the pin back. Looks like it's on this bigger connector, second one down on this side. So try to figure that out and then just trying to figure out how to cram this in here this is really really tight tighter than I expected and it's a lot of wiring I got a fuel pressure regulator to install all these modules need to be secured um, and not clanging around and stuff um, so lots to figure out here all right running the reading the peanut pinouts here this white wire is actually the ground for the unit. This black wire is the ground for the knock sensor. The red wire is like I suspected, which is power for the unit, which I'll run off of my amp link PDM, make sure it gets a full 20 amps at um, a full 14 volts. The other thing that I'm not 100% sure on is this knock sensor has a headphone input. It looks like you can hook it up to a computer and I think it's for calibrating the knock sensor originally. Since I bought this news, this was or used, this was calibrated by uh, Martin at Precision Motorsports in Canada. So I'm hoping that I don't even have to use this. And I think if I just hook, uh, I just want to validate that the white is ground. If anybody out there knows that that makes sense on MoTeC wiring, please let me know. Uh, it just doesn't feel right, and especially when there's eyelets everywhere else, and there's nothing on here. I don't know why they would have not removed it with an eyelet. But that could just be my own concern. I should probably try to bench test this and make sure it's working. Stay tuned. All right, further trying to sort this. I've got the connector for the MoTeC goes into here. And from that, there's this main harness 
and that connects to the factory wiring. In, embedded in that is all of these plugs that I, I really don't know what they do. I don't know if this is just kind of universal for other systems if you didn't have a, a plug and play harness. So these I think just get tied up. I have another relay here. And again, I assume it's because the previous owner probably had problems with the voltage cutting out. So he did a direct wire a relay in to stop that. With my PDM, I don't need any relays. So I don't, but I almost wonder if it's more trouble than it's worth to try to eliminate this right now. Um, my this embedded in this is also the harness that goes to the wideband lambda sensor, which is going to run up that way. So I'm just trying to get this laid in here. I'm, I'm wondering if this is going to lay kind of more in this area, and then I'll bring this underneath this bulkhead up to here. Now, in addition to that, we got this sub harness that comes off of here. You can tell there's quality wiring mixed in with more homemade wiring again to another relay. So what I'm, what I'm guessing is this one powers the F, uh, fuel pressure regulator and uh, boost control. So I'm wondering if they needed their own power and that's why we have separate power leads and ground leads for that. So um, and then this other harness down here, this is where you plug in your USB and this is your standalone knock um, sensor and harness. Uh, this will get bolted to the starter bolt, which is going to be right down here. Um, so, any help or guidance anybody has, I'm all ears. Alright, I think it's sorted. I've got this harness here, I've traced the pins back. Um, the white wire is in fact a ground. This is in fact a direct power to the MoTeC unit that works off of a relay. The key acts as a uh, switch input for the relay. The sub harness here has another relay on it and I believe that is what's powering or it needs to power the boost control solenoid and there's a red wire here. Again, this looks professional, like maybe this is something that Martin did at Precision Sports uh, for the previous customer when they ordered it. Um, so this looks all uh, very legit. It, the relay looks like maybe something, you know, maybe added to the fact afterwards. So maybe they were running again into voltage issues, powering this. I do know that the previous owner tried to use closed loop boost control and then ended up abandoning it and going to open loop. Um, I was hoping not to do that. I don't know if voltage was the cause or something else. Um, but I think I'm at the point where I'm going to try to plug this in, just lay it on top here and just see if I can get the dash power up and just see um, well, what other issues we might run into. All right. A bit nervous if I'm not lying to anybody. I've got the MoTeC connected here. Um, I've got power and ground that I can feel like I've established. <laughs> uh, I've got the, the hot there and the negative there. I have temporarily got it plugged into or I had it plugged into the, the harness there um, theoretically everything is hot I've got my key set up here and the dash is plugged in moment of truth that's a good sign the 13 uh, warning is normal I'm going to attempt to open the ECU for the first time. Look at that, it connected. It already connected, there's a diagnostic error. Open ECU. ECU data does not match a file, new file be created, okay. Let's save this. I already had a file that I started in here, um, kind of pre-editing. Let's just save it to that. Holy smokes, guys. We're online. It looks like it's connected. All right. Air temp's working, 16 degrees C. Diagnostic errors. I'm not sure what that is.
don't know how to get those arrow keys up. Keys down. But guys, I think it's connected. No shorts, no flames. All right. Let's see if I can dial things in here with the Motec on the computer here. I'll be right back. All right, guys. Look, I'm hot. I, I clicked on this uh, view sensors icon up here and it pulled up this window and look everything is live in here. I'm going to press on the throttle position sensor which is right there where my arrow is pointing and look at this. Wide open. It's working. Everything is, is, is hot right on key start. This is great. My diagnostic errors that I had below shows exhaust, uh, manifold pressure um, because my map sensor is unplugged right now. How cool is that? And barometric pressure. So I assume I got that unplugged somewhere. I don't know what this one is over here. We'll figure that out later. Fuel, look at this. It's actually adjusting the fuel trims and pulse widths. So my fuel injectors are hot. Ignition advance. Everything here, this was moving earlier, this is hot. I wonder if I bang on the knock sensor a little bit lately, if it will show anything. Not yet. I'm not sure. I don't want to, I don't want to wreck anything here. So I'll, I'll figure that out. Um, boost. I wonder if that solenoid, if I got that hooked up right. Boost aim. So this isn't even control. He had this all zeroed out. So I figured out. When I said I edited the, the file earlier, um, I actually it opened the file that's on the Motec right now. So I'm reading the previous owner's Motec for the first time, and which would be great because you can do a compare feature similar to HP tuners. So I'll be able to look at what is different. His was a turbo charge setup, uh, very similar to mine. Um, let's see. Look at all this stuff here. Um, internal power supplies, eight volt engine supplies, supplying eight volts. There's a, there, I, I did see that on one of the wiring diagrams. There, a lot of the sensors are eight volts on here. Looks like that's working great. So, DB. I'll drive a wire up. I don't want to use any of that. Uh, GPS. I might try to link in my GPS from my um, Raspberry Pi dash. I do have GPS and a sensor on there for my speed. And I might try to link that in here and someday if I get really creative, try to figure out a way to do traction control versus referencing the track speed, which has got a sensor that already works here. Uh, and I can use it compared to GPS speed and maybe kick in some uh, fuel cut or something to try to get some traction. But anyway guys, this is great news. It looks like I am completely um, hot right now. Um, if I close this window out, you can see my battery voltage is working here. Um, my temperature is flickering right here a little bit, 16.8. About the exact temperature of my shop is 58 degrees right now, so that's pretty dang close. Um, and this is awesome. This is what I wanted. I, basically, this tells me everything is set to go. I just need to get it plumbed into the sled, and I can start playing. Woohoo! <laughs> Thanks. All right, I know I'm a little excited, but I just kind of been playing around in here and I found some more tables. This is actually my fuel table, and look how cool this is. This is very similar to what I'm used to tuning with HP tuners. Um, this is your fuel map, RPM against throttle position sensor, and then it gives you the, the nice 3D view. You can really see what's going on um, as you are at different levels. This is just fantastic. Um, also got um, my, um, my timing tables, this is awesome. I um, did a compare against a naturally aspirated file um, way before this, and I found that the timing retard is actually um, only two degrees off of stock, which I thought was um, higher than I was expecting. I, I was thinking we were gonna cut uh, 10 to 10 degrees of timing or more, but um, only cutting two. Uh, so that's great news that I'm gonna be able to keep most of my timing. Um, it is decompressed motor, and so I had it initially planned to really give me some timing in this map here. You can see where this is kind of in the lower area, um, down in here in this mid-range. 
I really want it to be snappy, you know, and I want to make up for that that low compression. So I'm going to be able to dial this timing up here and get me some advance and really get some, some mid-range snap. I want this thing to be so responsive. Um, that's what I love about this Yamaha Apex motor anyway. The, uh, I don't know what that is. The closed loop boost control, you know, I, this is not set up. Remember, he's in open loop. Um, I will be setting all this up. I'll populate this table. I've already started on a different file. Just so then I can kind of, what my goal here is to give, I want to plumb my boost control solenoid into the intercooler. And so on the, you know, on the positive side of the throttle bodies. And so that it, it will basically always be seeing boost. And what I want it to do is um, add a little boost to the supercharger to help reduce the mechanical load so that it can get better mileage. But then um, when it, when I, when I need it or when I open the throttle, um, um, I've got both kind of compounded already ready to go. So I'm hoping my Vortec blow-off valve will be able to keep up uh, blowing all that excess boost off while I'm just cruising in, in, in a vacuum. And um, you know how trail riding is. It's, it's on and off, on and off. And, and I just, I don't want any lag. I want this thing to be super responsive. And I think with closed boost control, I can get there. That's the number of cylinders. Da, 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 da. What else can I look at here? Show you. This is so cool. Um, everything is just so easy to set up. Uh, again, it's my first time looking at this, and I already basically know what I'm looking at, which is awesome. Um, the, the the thing I don't know is how this particular motor responds to changes in here. This is my closed loop fueling tables. Um, you you can dial in by throttle position and by RPM. Uh, your exact lambda value. Um, this is just great. Look it up here at the top end when you're screaming across the lake. Got to richened up a little bit, a little bit leaner down here. This is what I wanted with Motec. This is the kind of control you can get. Um, I'm going to be able to dial all this in and just find out exactly what this motor likes for fuel and timing. Um, I've got all the right controls to be able to monitor. I just got a link in the, the uh, knock control and, and then I can make tables to adjust based on knock. So uh, very, very cool stuff here, and I'm so excited to uh, to get this working. Now I think the hard part will be getting all of that back on the sled and uh, getting it hooked up so I can start to play. I might uh, take this thing for a rip, just supercharged, um, just to make sure everything's working good and get some data logs because this is really, really cool, guys. Thanks.